Hey folks, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I was not planning on being in the video today, um, but I realized that y'all don't want to just stare at dryer lint while I talk about what to do with it for 15 minutes. So we're going to go back and forth a little bit. I'm in my basement, such as it is. It is um, our family laundry closet. So because we have six people in our family in a small house with small closets, half of our basement is a family laundry area and we keep all our bed sheets and clothing in Ikea racks. I um, can turn this way. You can see one of them. This is the one for my daughters. And um, one this way. This has all the sheets and things in it. And so we keep all of our laundry down here so that we can use the closets for things like um, home office space or a little play reading cubby for my kids, things like that. And then the laundry is also centralized. So a lot of larger families use the family closet method and it works really well for us, but it means the basement is really chaotic. Also have, you know, the we and my kids uh, keyboard and my husband's office on the other side of the basement. So just bear with me. It is what it is. Um, I want to talk today about dryer lint. And the reason I want to talk about it is because it's come up in a number of permaculture, sustainable living, um, zero waste kind of groups. What do you do with your dryer lint? Okay, so why is it important to talk about laundry lint in the context of sustainable living and permaculture? Well, when your clothes are all natural fiber, like hemp, cotton, linen, rayon, wool, it doesn't matter that much. When you are done with your garments or your sheets, when they shed little bits of fiber, those products are all readily available and easy for the microbial life of the soil and for decomposers and detritivores to break back down and put them back into the soil cycle. The problem arises when we are looking at synthetic fibers, like my sleeping bags behind me. Sorry, I like to camp. Um, those are nylon, polyester, and acrylic. And they are made through a synthesized process they are polymers that are produced from, depending on what they are, um, crude oil, coal, natural gas, and or a combination thereof. For example, nylon is made by using natural gas and crude oil. Those materials do not decompose like natural fibers. They mechanically break down into smaller and smaller pieces that become microplastic pollution. And we are just beginning to understand how serious the issue of microplastic pollution is. We know that microplastics release over time all kinds of toxic chemicals. We also know that they um, accumulate the higher you are in the food chain. There's a trophic cascade where they are consumed by creatures at the bottom of the food chain and they accumulate and are not passed out of their bodies. And then as predators consume them, they get a concentrated amount because they are eating, you know, like a, a sea otter is eating a clam after clam after clam after clam that has um, bits of, of plastic in its body. And so it's really detrimental for some of those um, threatened apex predators that we have, like orcas, like... Um, you know, a lot of marine mammals and also um, terrestrial mammals as well. And also um, our apex um, avian animals as, as well. So when we're looking at um, eagles and um, um, owls and things like that, we're looking at creatures that are accumulating large amounts of plastic in their bodies and we're seeing really detrimental effects. Not to mention humans are an apex predator and a lot of these plastic compounds um, release uh, PCBs and other toxic carcinogenic um, chemicals throughout the life of the plastic. So it's a problem. It's a problem for us. It's a problem for um, 
wildlife. And if we are permaculturists, we need to care for the earth. So we need to be sure that we're not damaging um, the creatures on this planet by our dressing and our clothing, but we're also damaging other people and our own bodies. And we're also passing it down to future generations because we are looking at plastic compounds that don't readily break down. And so we are passing on to our children and our children's children the devastating consequences of our heavy consumption of plastic. And clothes are the fourth major contributor to microplastic um, pollution. So it's a serious problem. So let's talk about the two different mechanisms through which when we do laundry, we put lint into the environment. Hang tight. So here is my conventional washing machine and we have two ways here we can prevent our synthetic microplastic lint from getting into the watershed. So one load of laundry in the washing machine can produce 700,000 pieces of microplastic if you are washing with synthetic fibers. Ah, how do we keep those from getting into our watershed? And then into fish and then into, um, you know, our uh, sea otters and our own bodies when we eat fish, right? So there's a couple different ways. The first way is really simple and I think it gets overlooked. And that is if you are using acrylic, polyester, or blend clothing, wash it in a laundry bag. There are laundry bags on the market that capture the lint and keep it from going into the actual basin of the washing machine. So wash them separately in a bag. And then you have to take that lint and put it in the garbage. There are two products. I will link to all of these in the description. One is called Guppy Friend and one is called Cora Ball. And I use right now a cheap knockoff that I got on the internet. Um, but you can use any of these kinds of products and they go in your um, washing machine and they capture and grab the lint out of the water. And then when the cycle's done, you um, can just clean them and put them in the in the garbage. So the, there's the kinds that work inside your washing machine. And then there's also a product that I'm actually saving up for and I really want to get. It's called Filtrol. They run about 140 bucks, And it is a pump that goes right here. I know it's dark, but this is the outlet where the water goes into um, the city line, right? And goes to the wastewater treatment plant. And our wastewater treatment plants are not really set up to filter microplastics effectively right now. But the good news is that we don't have to wait for them to catch up. If you save up, that filtrol runs about $140 and it is an external basket and it catches all of the lint and then you can put it in the garbage. Okay, I realize that I just said multiple times to put your laundry lint in the garbage and folks might question that like Angela aren't you a permaculturist and don't you believe in the permaculture principle of produce no waste yes I totally believe in the permaculture principle of produce no waste but we live in an imperfect system where we haven't discovered a way to use all of our waste resources and turn them into um, turn them into something useful so sometimes because we exist in that imperfect system our only option is to put things in the landfill. Obviously the point in the laundry cycle where folks are producing the most lint is gonna be out of the dryer. But can you compost that and can you burn it? And again, the answer is if you're using a synthetic fiber, no, you can't. You can't compost it for the reason that I just spoke of, microplastic pollution. If what you are drying is 100% natural fibers, absolutely throw that in the compost go for it. Put it in your worm bin. Your worms would love it. They love cotton fiber. They'll eat wool. They love any kind of paper fiber. So um, rayon and flax fibers, absolutely. Put it in your worm bin. Put it in your compost. If it's all natural fiber. If it's all natural fiber, burn it. Go for it. Use it as fire. This is something we did when I was a Girl Scout and someone posted this in a thread about what to do with dryer lint and that's that you can make fire starter right so if it's all natural fiber you can put it in your egg carton here and then fill it with um, wax so 
melted paraffin if that's what you want to use or melted beeswax or soy wax and then each of these you can break or cut off and they become great fire starter you don't want to do it if you are working with a synthetic fiber if your dryer lint has acrylic polyester or nylon in it you don't want to make fire starters this way and you don't want to just put your lint into the firebox and you like, you know, it's really easy to ignite it. You don't want to use that in your wood stove or your fireplace. And that's because burning these synthetic fibers produces any of the following in various combinations and they are all toxic to be inhaled and toxic to get on your skin or in your eyes. Okay. Ammonia hydrogen cyanide, dioxins, carbon monoxide, formaldehyde, acrolyne, which is a big one, benzene, and they also release heavy metals like cadmium when you burn them. So really our best choice is to put them in the garbage, unfortunately. Hey, maybe some scientists and engineers can come up with a great way to reuse these materials, but for now, no. So let's look here. Um, here's some dryer lint from the last couple loads I saved. Oof. You can't necessarily tell from looking at them which ones contain synthetic fi synthetic fibers and which ones don't. So the reality is, is that this load contains some synthetic fibers. So did this load. This load is all natural fibers and this load is synthetic fibers. So what I try and do is if we look down here, I have two containers. I have a big bucket here and a little bowl. And any of my loads that are mixed go in here and they will go in the garbage. Any of my loads that are all natural, so let's say I did a load of sheets or a load of towels or a load of, I wear a lot of cotton and linen clothing. Before I did roller derby, before I did sports, most of my clothing was natural fiber. And um, I have a number of synthetic or blend outfits. Um, and my kids have a lot of synthetic blends, unfortunately which we didn't used to previously have, but sometimes that's what you get at the thrift store or it's what my kids pick out. And um, those all go in this big basket and they go in the garbage. But if I'm doing a load that I know is all natural clothing, all natural um, sheets we don't use, cotton poly blend sheets, I'm going to compost it or I'm going to use it as fire starter. So these guys are going to go in here. And this one is going to go in here. Okay, so we don't have a great solution here. We are doing two good steps to reduce how much synthetic microplastic lint is getting into the environment because of our clothing and our bedding. The first one is we're using our washing bags and our guppies friend and our filtrol capture methods to collect the lint before it ever gets into the watershed then we're putting it in the garbage. The second way is that we are taking our dryer lint and we are being responsible to compost only the dryer lint that is 100% natural fiber and to put the rest into the garbage. So what can we do beyond that step of responsibly capturing synthetic fiber at our house and making sure it doesn't get out into the environment? Okay, so let's talk about the three things we can do to reduce how much of this synthetic waste pollutant product we're producing in the first place. Number one is wash your clothes less often. We live in an era where we are being pummeled with marketing that tells us you need to launder your clothes every time you wear them. Who's putting out that kind of message? People who make detergent? People who make washing machines? You don't have to wash your clothes every time you wear them. You can spot clean your clothes, right? Get a little something on there, use a little bit of dish soap and a wet rag and scrub it off right away. Don't have to launder the whole garment because you got a little spot on it. We don't have to wash our clothes every time we wear them. And in fact, until the last 25, 30 years, nobody laundered their clothes every time they wore them. It wears your clothes out. Every time you produce lint, you are taking that fiber off your clothes and your clothes are wearing out more quickly. So wash your clothes less. They will last longer and you will produce less of the polluting microplastics. And so it's a win. Clothes last longer, less polluting. Also, you use a lot less water when you don't wash your clothes as often. Okay, so look at my notes here real quick. 
Number two is skip the dryer altogether. So the dryer further agitates and knocks off fibers. And also, um, if you are going to use the dryer, please don't use dryer sheets. Dryer sheets, even the more green ones, are really bad for the environment. They are loaded with chemicals you do not want in your clothes. They make your clothes really flammable. Um, and they release uh, limonene and chloroform and um, benzyl acetate into the environment and also put it all over your clothes and also put it on the lint that otherwise maybe you would have natural fiber lint. But because you are using dryer sheets, you are coating it with toxic chemicals and you don't want to put it in your warm bin or your compost. So if you don't use dryer sheets, what can you do to reduce static in your clothes and not put those chemicals into your body, into the environment, into your clothing, into the lint that you produce? You can use wool dryer balls. They're easy to find all over the internet, but they're also really easy to make. And they reduce static and actually collect a little bit of lint, but they really make your clothes softer and dry nicer. And you don't have to add flammable carcinogenic chemicals to your dryer to use them. So highly recommend. So let's talk about the last thing you can do. And this is one people don't want to hear. And maybe it seems like conceptually the easiest, but it's really the hardest to implement in real life. And that is don't use synthetic fibers. Don't wear polyester, acrylic, or nylon clothes. And if you look at my video I did on the problem with fast fashion, you're going to find that all natural fiber clothing is expensive and um, not accessible to a lot of people, people of um, different ages. Kids' clothes is almost always a blend. And also different sizes. It's really hard to find high quality natural fiber clothing. I got this sweater at the thrift store. I love it. It is um, Ann Taylor and well-made cotton sweater. It's 90% cotton, 10% nylon because it has that little bit of stretch. So even if you're looking at a well-made garment, if it's got that little bit of stretch, they've probably put nylon in it. Good quality jeans nowadays are usually made with nylon. We all like tight clinging clothes that stretches and then stretches back, right? Doesn't lose its shape. And in order to get that kind of elasticity, they put synthetic fibers in your clothes. So even if you think like, I'm buying something that is natural fiber, it's often got a synthetic component to it, even if it's high end, but particularly if it's fast fashion. So it's trickier than you would think. Again, before I played sports, I was really committed to thrifting and buying only natural clothing, having only natural table linens and bed linens and making sure my towels were 100% cotton. And it's really hard if you have athletic wear or a uniform for work to still be able to have 100% cotton or 100% wool. But there are starting to be more companies on the market that are making athletic wear and um, work attire that is all natural fiber. So I'll try and put some links below. So I hope that helps y'all. It's kind of a lengthy video on lint. It seems like it wouldn't be an exciting topic, but it's really important because it is such a huge contributor to how much microplastics are in our environment. And we want to take care of ourselves, our bodies, the creatures in our environment, animals. We want to take care of our kids and future generations, and we wanna leave the planet better than we found it. So it's important to go ahead and address these issues. So thanks for watching, I really appreciate it.